and in this part i am going to discuss about what is ohm's law and uh, some small problems related to the ohm's law so ohm's law states that the current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends and provided that the temperature and the physical conditions remain constant so here in this diagram i have shown um, the complete circuit of the ohm's law so let me draw it very quickly over here you would be requiring a battery like this and here the battery is this one this is the battery eliminator and then the positive terminal of the battery has to go in the positive terminal of the ammeter so this is ammeter that records the electric current and this one is the ammeter over here and then the negative terminal will go in the resistance and the another end of the resistor we are going to connect it to the rheostat like this and then key is optional you can directly connect it like this and please make sure that the voltmeter has to be attached with the fixed resistance whose value we are supposed to find out and the current enters through this end so that has to be connected with the positive terminal of the voltmeter and this the when the current leaves the resistor that end has to be connected with the negative terminal of the voltmeter so that that is how i have connected over here this is the voltmeter that measures the potential difference and this is the resistor whose value we are supposed to find out so this is that r correct and this one is the rheostat so this is the rheostat and if you want to learn about the rheostat in depth the links are given in the description please watch that so now what we are supposed to do is that we will increase the resistance of the rheostat and then we will note what is going to happen to the current and the potential difference across the two ends of the fixed resistance right so let us watch that first and then come to the discussion so here i have connected the voltmeter across the two ends of the resistor and the ammeter is connected in series right so these are the basic connections that you should remember that the potential difference when it is to be measured it has to be measured with a voltmeter across the resistor in parallel ammeter is to be connected in series now if i increase or decrease the resistance of the entire circuit with the help of rheostat you will see that the potential difference and the current will proportionately increase or decrease let's see on decreasing the resistance of the rheostat the voltage and current are increasing proportionately and again on increasing the rheostat resistance the voltage and current are decreasing proportionately so the potential difference across the two ends of the resistance is directly proportional to the current you just now saw that and we can increase or decrease the amount of current flowing through the wire by changing the resistance of the rheostat okay so what we can finally write over here is the following that potential difference v is directly proportional to the current i that is flowing through the conductor right and this is the potential difference across two ends of the resistance and if you remove this proportionality sign then this will be added we will have to add a resistance as a constant and that constant itself is the resistance right so but this has to happen at a constant temperature so this is the ohm's law main formula that we are going to use in this entire electricity chapter you can only use ohm's law if the temperature and the other physical conditions remain the same and the ohm's law is not obeyed by all the materials here we are only dealing with conductors correct so there are insulators so there are um, semiconductors which do not obey the ohm's law so we are going to classify them as non ohmic resistor so if you plot a graph of v versus i so let me just plot a graph like this and if i am supposed to plot a graph of voltage against the current then it will be a straight line in the textbooks we show the straight line passing through the origin because when the setup is off the current and the potential difference will be zero so since it is a directly proportional behavior the graph will be a straight line and now let's actually mark two points on the graph this is point a and this is point b so i will get two values of current v1 and i1 as well as the voltages the potential differences and here i can write down i2 as well as v2 so if i am supposed to plot the graph it will be a straight line and if i find the slope of this graph slope is equal to change in y axis upon change in x axis so here it will be change in voltage 
upon the change in the current that is i2 minus i1. So basically this is change in voltage upon change in current. So this is nothing but voltage upon current that is resistance. So if you find the slope of V versus I graph and since we saw that it is a proportional behavior, so it will be a straight line graph and the slope of this graph you are going to get this as a resistance, right? And now from here if we say that R is equal to V upon I, so V is potential difference, so volt, the SI unit here the ampere, so ampere, the volt upon ampere is also known as ohm, like this and if you want to define one ohm resistance from here you can say that if v is one volt and i is one ampere so you can uh, you can uh, actually numerically write it like this but you can make a definition in the following way that if the potential difference across the two ends of the conductor like this is your conductor and the current passing through the conductor is one ampere and if you measure the potential difference with the help of the voltmeter if that turns out to be one volt then this resistance of the rod is said to be 1 ohm, correct? So if the potential difference across two ends of the conductor is 1 volt and the current passing through the resistance is 1, oh, sorry, 1 ampere, then the resistance of that particular substance is said to be 1 ohm, correct? Okay, now some small questions that we are going to deal with the ohm's law over here is the following. So you are given one graph, like this is V versus I graph, and you are given two resistances like this. So what we have done is basically we have connected the entire uh, Ohm's law circuit. Then we have two different resistances. So first of all, I'm going to plug resistance R1 and uh, perform the experiment. And then V divided by I, the ratio I'm going to find it as the resistance. So that first experiment graph is given by this R1. And then I removed that resistance and then I connected another resistance. Again, repeated the, the entire procedure. I got the resistance or the V versus I graph as the following represented by 2. So now the question is which resistance is larger? So you just need to see the slope of the graph and the slope actually depends upon the angle with respect to X axis. So if the angle with respect to X axis is small, the slope is small and the slope in V versus I graph is the resistance. So we can very well see that the angle of the R2 is comparatively smaller with respect to the R1 graph. So here we can say that the slope of the second graph is smaller than the slope of first graph and the slope is the resistance. So resistance R2 is going to be smaller than resistance R1. Simply look at the slope, more the angle with respect to x-axis, more the slope, right? Now the second question is as under You are given one resistance but under two temperatures. So this is resistor R at temperature T2 at temperature T1. So what we are going to do is we are going to take up this experiment with this resistor at say for example in an air conditioned room we are going to complete this entire experiment then we are going to plot the graph of V and I we are going to find the resistance by finding the slope. Now the same entire setup we are going to carry to Rajasthan say for example in a hot desert we do this experiment over there the temperature is different right and uh, due to high temperature the electrons are going to move faster they are going to collide internally more and uh, since the resistance depends upon collision so the resistance increases so larger the temperature larger the resistance correct so here from this graph we can very well see that at temperature t2 the slope is larger here the slope is larger so the resistance depends upon the slope so more the slope more the resistance and more the resistance more the temperature which says that temperature t2 is larger than temperature t1 Okay, so let's extend our uh, discussion on uh, ohmic and non-ohmic resistors. So ohmic resistors are basically those materials which actually obey the Ohm's law. Uh, that means the voltage, uh, the potential difference across the ends of those materials would be directly proportional to the current. And if you will plot the graph of V versus I, it will be a straight line for them. So few of the examples I have mentioned over here are the following. <clears throat> You can see that the aluminum or mostly all the metals, copper, then dilute sulfuric acid, then copper electrodes are the good examples. So if you plot a graph of V versus I 
it will be a straight line and that would also pass from the origin because the first reading is always when the current is zero the potential difference is also zero and if you will find the slope with any two given points suppose you you take these two points or let let me call these two points as one two or these two points as three and four and if you find the slope it will always be a straight line so and the slope would be constant sorry so the resistance would be constant as well as the v and the i graph would be a straight line passing through origin and voltage would be proportional to the current correct but we have few examples of non ohmic resistors so they do not obey the ohm's law that means the potential difference across their ends is not going to be proportional to the current so few examples of non ohmic resistances are light emitting diode so you, you might have seen these leds and then you have solar cell again and the filament of the bulb as well okay so what happens in the filament of bulb is when you plot a graph of v versus i correct this is the potential difference and this is the current so when the filament is actually you know cold the moment you switch on the bulb at that time the filament is cold so it will have some fixed value of resistance but as the filament of the bulb heats up because when you pass the current through it it heats up so after about say 15 20 minutes the bulb becomes very hot filament becomes hot and its resistance rises so its v versus i graph is found to be a curved line something like this and you can check by yourself that the resistance will keep on increasing so if you keep on finding the slope as you go towards more value of the current right or then what is going to happen is the resistance will surely change so they do not obey the ohm's law correct the voltage and the current proportionality is not seen over here same in case of these diodes as well as the light emitting diodes leds which are mostly made up of all semiconductors there the v versus i graph is seen something like this and you will learn in grade 12 about this in more detail and it's not compulsory that their graph may always pass through origin it may pass through origin or it may not pass through origin but definitely voltage and current are not proportional to each other so they are ohmic non ohmic